One of the least known nations of Europe are the Sami. They've been sharing the continent with the others for about four millennia, and yet they remained a unique and mysterious nation for most of us. I think it's time to rectify this, so in this video, we will take a closer look at the history, culture and challenges faced by one of Europe's indigenous nations. Hi, my name is Sebastian and you're watching 7 Facts. The Sami people have a long and fascinating history dating back over 4000 years. The Sami are the only remaining indigenous people within the EU who have a distinct culture and language that is not of Indo-European origin. They have inhabited the northern regions of today's Scandinavia, Finland and Russia for thousands of years, living off the land and adapting to the harsh climate. Since the early days of their history, the Sami were primarily hunters and gatherers, relying on the land for their sustenance. We presume they lived somewhere along the Volga River and began moving northwest about 2000 years ago. Those who reached the Finnish lakeland developed into the Sami nation, who, by the way, are a Uralic ethnic group. They lived in small nomadic groups, moving from place to place in search of food and resources. Over time, as they became more skilled at living off the land, they began to develop more settled communities. Despite the challenges of living in such a harsh environment, the Sami managed to thrive and develop a rich and unique culture. They had their own beliefs and traditions, including a strong connection to nature and the spirit world. They also had their own language, which has survived to this day despite centuries of oppression. Unfortunately, the Sami people have also faced significant challenges throughout their history. They have been subjected to colonization and forced assimilation by their neighboring countries, which has had a devastating impact on their culture and way of life. In fact, we should establish this from the get-go. The region inhabited by the Sami is called Sapmi, but was known as Lapland for most Europeans and their inhabitants Laplanders, not Sami. That is an offensive and misleading term. Although both Finland and Sweden still have provinces called Lapland, they're not synonymous with the Sapmi region and that term is never used by the Sami, so neither should we. Despite many challenges, the Sami have remained resilient and have fought to preserve their cultural heritage and way of life. The origins of Sami culture and language are fascinating and unique. The Sami are one of the only indigenous peoples in Europe whose language is not of Indo-European origin, which means that it is not related to the dominant languages of Europe such as English, French or German. And to clarify, the United Nations defines indigenous people as a non-dominant group, socially, economically, politically and culturally distinct, with strong links to territories and natural resources and having a historical continuity with pre-colonial or pre-settler societies. It is a broad definition for sure, but legally speaking, yes, the Sami are an indigenous nation of Europe, along with the Inuits of Greenland and about 40 distinct peoples living within Russia. Anyway. The Sami language is part of the Uralic language family, which includes languages spoken by several other indigenous groups in Russia and nations in Central Europe and the Baltic region. Namely, it's a language related to Finnish, Estonian, Hungarian, which are the popular ones, and Moksha, Mari, Urmut or Komi, which are not so well known. Now, I say Sami language, but in fact we're talking about more than one language. The Sami is more like a family which has several dialects and the majority of them are still spoken by tens of thousands of people to this day, although Sami is considered an endangered language. Sami culture is closely tied to the land and the environment. They have a strong connection to the natural world and have developed a way of life that is sustainable and in harmony with their surroundings. This includes their traditional livelihoods of hunting, fishing and reindeer herding, which are still an important part of their culture today. One unique aspect of Sami culture is their traditional clothing. The Sami have developed specialized clothing that is designed to withstand the harsh weather conditions of the Arctic North, including very cold temperatures and high winds. They also have a tradition of using bright colors and intricate patterns in their clothing, which is both functional and beautiful. 
The challenges of living in such a harsh environment have forced the Sami to develop a rich and diverse culture that is quite unique in the world and certainly in Europe. What they have is a testament to their resilience and their ability to adapt to changing circumstances over thousands of years. The Sami people have faced numerous challenges throughout history and unfortunately many of these challenges still persist today. From colonization to forced assimilation, the Sami people have struggled to maintain their cultural identity and way of life. During the Middle Ages, the Sami people faced religious persecution as Christianity spread across Europe. The church saw the Sami people's traditional beliefs as pagan and heretical and missionaries were sent to convert them to Christianity. This, of course, led to the suppression of Sami language and culture. Now, to be clear, the Sami do not predate Norse settlement of Scandinavia. Both migrations happened independently, but the Norse became dominant and founded their kingdoms like Norway or Sweden. And for many centuries, the Sami and the Scandinavians had relatively little contact, with the latter largely ignoring the Sami. But starting from the 17th century, Sweden and Norway began to colonize the Sami land, displacing many Sami people and taking over their traditional reindeer grazing areas. And this gave birth to conflicts over land and resources, and since the Sami people were a much smaller, less centralized nation, it was them who were forced to adapt to new ways of life to survive. In the 19th and 20th centuries, the Sami people again faced forced assimilation policies, particularly in Norway, where the government implemented the policy of Norwegianization. Sami children in Norway, but also Sweden, were taken from their families and sent to boarding schools where they were taught to speak Norwegian or Swedish and forced to abandon their traditional language and culture. The logic of the authorities was that the Sami were backward and primitive and in need of being civilized. Today, the Sami people still face discrimination and marginalization in many areas of life including education, employment and political representation. Despite efforts to promote and protect Sami culture and language, many of them continue to struggle to maintain their traditions and way of life in the face of ongoing challenges. Over time, the Sami people have evolved their way of life to adapt to modern times while still preserving their culture and traditions. Today, many Sami people live in towns and cities, but there are still those who maintain a traditional way of life in the Arctic tundra. One example of this is the practice of Sida, a traditional Sami communal organization that is responsible for managing reindeer herds. The Sida is made up of a group of Sami families who work together to manage the herds and it is still a vital part of the Sami way of life. In addition to reindeer herding, the Sami people also engage in other economic activities such as fishing, hunting and handicrafts. They are known for their beautiful handcrafted items such as traditional clothing, bags and jewelry. The Sami people also have a rich musical tradition with a unique style of chanting called yoik, but at the same time their dancing traditions are not that rich. While many Sami people have integrated into modern society, there is still a strong sense of pride in their heritage and a desire to preserve their culture. Sami language and culture schools have been established to ensure the continuation of their traditions. Despite these efforts to adapt to modern times and preserving their culture, the Sami still face discrimination and land rights issues, although no longer at the scale of the previous centuries. And it's this resilience and determination to maintain their cultural heritage that continues to inspire and captivate people around the world. Reindeer herding is a defining feature of the Sami. It's the traditional way of life for this nation and it continues to be an important part of their culture and economy. Reindeer are well adapted to the harsh Arctic environment and they have been essential to the survival of the Sami people for thousands of years. Today, there are around 10,000 Samis who are involved in reindeer herding and the industry is actually worth millions of dollars each year. Reindeer meat is a sought-after delicacy in many countries and the Sami also use reindeer for their fur, hides and antlers. However, as you can imagine, their way of reindeer herding faces many challenges. Climate change, industrialization and infrastructure development have all had a significant impact on the reindeer herding industry. 
the Sami are also facing competition from other industries, such as mining and forestry, that are encroaching on their traditional land. And yet, these people continue to work hard to preserve their traditional way of life and protect the reindeer herding industry. And they are also developing new methods and do adopt new technologies in order to adapt to the changing and challenging conditions, all in an effort to ensure the long-term sustainability of their culture and economy. By now, you should understand that the Sami people have a long history of resistance against various forms of oppression and discrimination that they've had to face throughout history. The policies of the 19th century, the ones that were supposed to civilize the Sami nation, were in fact aimed to eradicate their culture and language. This is fact, not opinion. But in response to such actions, the Sami didn't just stand still and take the heat. They didn't organize revolts or wars that would have been hard or more accurately borderline impossible, but they did begin to organize politically, demanding recognition of their rights and autonomy. In 1917, the first ever Sami conference was held in Trondheim, Norway, where leaders from different regions gathered to discuss their common concerns. And since then, the Sami political movement has grown and gained momentum with the establishment of several parliaments and councils across the Nordic countries. The Sami parliaments have limited legislative powers but do serve as consultative bodies on matters related to the Sami people and their rights. In recent years, the Sami people have also become more vocal in their demands for recognition and protection of their land and natural resources, particularly in relation to the mining and energy industries. The Sami parliament in Norway, for example, has opposed the construction of several wind power projects in Sápmi, arguing that they would have negative impacts on the environment and their way of life. The Sami political movement has been successful in raising awareness of the issues faced by their people and advocating for their rights. But, as you can imagine, there is still much work to be done in terms of achieving full recognition and autonomy, particularly in areas such as education and language rights. The Sami have a rich cultural heritage and they are unique and quite distinct from the other European cultures. Except that that's not quite right. The Sami do share both their language and culture with other indigenous peoples around Europe and beyond. The Sami are closely related to other indigenous peoples in Scandinavia and Russia, including the Ninets, the Komi, the Karelians and the Finns. These groups share a common history of living off the land and adapting to harsh environmental conditions. Most of these nations are indeed small and do not have their own national states, but are under the sovereignty of other nations. And similarly, most of them have faced assimilation and discrimination policies throughout the centuries. Culturally, the Sami are related to these nations, but language-wise, their relationship with other Europeans broaden. Hungarians, Estonians and Finns all share a common ancestor with the Sami and all speak languages that are related. All this to say that, if you ever imagine that the Sami are not Europeans or that they are somehow outsiders, well, stop it. The Sami are unique among Europeans, but they are Europeans nonetheless. To make their voices be stronger, the Sami have also formed alliances with other indigenous peoples globally, including the Maori of New Zealand and the First Nations of North America. They have shared experiences of colonization, forced assimilation and discrimination and have worked together to promote indigenous rights and self-determination. In recent years, the Sami have become increasingly vocal in their demands for recognition of their rights as an indigenous people, both in their home countries and on the international stage. They have participated in the United Nations Permanent Forum on Indigenous Issues and have advocated for the recognition of the Sami parliament as a representative body for the Sami people. The challenges these people have faced throughout the centuries are monumental. But the Sami have shown remarkable resilience and have continued to fight for their cultural heritage and way of life. They are an inspiration to other indigenous peoples around the world who continue to struggle for recognition and respect. And, dare I say it, they are in fact an inspiration to us all. I hope this video was interesting enough to have inspired you to look into it further on your own. If you liked it, leave a like and subscribe. You can leave your comments downstairs and you can also check out my Patreon page if you want to support me. I do hope to see you next time. Bye.